Hey there, it's Norm from Tested.com. I'm really excited to be here with Michael McMaster. We met you last year at Maker Faire. You're one of the members of the R2D2 Builders Club. Yep. But also one of the few members of the Wally Builders Club. You've made your own life size Wally. Oh. Wally lives on a farm. We're here at your orange <laughs> farm in the middle of California to see your workshop and to hear about the story of how you built this Wally. So, where did this begin? Well, in 2007, um, a gentleman named Scott Washburn, uh, as a joke, we're all members of the R2 Builders Club, and we found out about this movie, Wally, -E, and it hadn't come out yet. It wasn't gonna come out till 2008. And he said, hey, why don't we start a Wally -E Builders Club? And we joked around, yeah, okay, let's do that. So we started a Wally -E Builders Club on Yahoo, it was a Yahoo group, and we had about a dozen members. You know, before the first movie came out, Scott had built a body with a head on it poking out, and we thought, well, hey, that's actually kind of funny. You know, maybe it would be kind of fun to build a Wally. -E. And so the next thing you know, well, five years later, we had this. So, so. going from building R2 to Wally's, -E, R2 was a real robot. They made right. a dozen of them for Star Wars, so you had some reference material. What was the reference for Wally? -E? Yeah, Wally -E was a lot more difficult. It was screen grabs, movie posters, there was a lot of printed material. Blu-ray was our friend. We were able to take a lot of screen grabs from that, which was very useful. And you learned through watching those Blu-rays that because Wally -E was CG, there wasn't just one shape. Right. So how is this Wally -E scaled in relation to the movie? Yeah, the first thing we found was that there were known objects in the movie. We had a Rubik's Cube, there was a VHS tape, and so we started with the hands and sort of worked our way backwards. And once we had that scale, we were able to extrapolate how large the hands were in relation to the body, how big the body was in relation to the head. And so that's the way we work sort of in reverse. After talking to Pixar animators, apparently we're pretty close. This is just what we would consider one-to-one -one scale, even though it does change scale a little bit in the movie, but... Um, how much of this is found parts versus how much are parts you had to fabricate? With this, unfortunately, everything is 100% scratch built. Uh, myself and Michael Senna, we each tackled different parts. He tackled the head and the hands. I worked on the track drive and we just went from there. So let's start with the head, because Wally's super expressive. And you were telling me earlier that there's a difference between your Wally and Mike Senna's Wally in building the head. Right, well Michael built the first head and his was made out of MDF, which is very heavy. Uh, I wanted to primarily use servos to move the head around, so I had to figure out a way to make it lighter. So what I wound up with, this is actually foam board like you'd find in Office Depot. And then I skinned it with paper. It's matte paper that there's like five layers in there. So it's really sturdy, but it's very lightweight. The servos have no trouble at all moving with it. And I used just a very simple video camera pan and tilt. Wow, and then this, doesn't look like it's paper. Even though it's foam paper, it looks like rusted metal. So there was a lot of painting and weathering. Yeah, I, I used the reference photos, so I knew that it had to have a lot of rust on it. Fortunately, I, I know a lot of guys that are prop builders, and so they were able to give me advice as far as how to paint it, techniques to use to make things look really weathered. Fortunately, there's a lot of YouTube videos, there's a lot of reference material on the internet. So I just dove in and just started painting it. Since we saw you last year, you've made some improvements. This is an ongoing project. So right. Tell me a little bit about the things you've changed in this. Right. This one has uh, an automotive lift now, a little linear actuator on the arm. Um, it's slow at the moment. I'm putting a faster linear actuator in and also adding a, a little gear motor so that the hand can wave. In the front, we have a solar charge level that actually operates now. Once it goes through this sequence, it resets and it monitors the battery voltage. Michael and I designed it but two other builders in the R2 group, Doug Dobbins, Michael Wheeler, they built this brilliant circuit board that has actually multi-functions. It's Arduino-based, um, it's expandable, it has way more features than we ever dreamed we would need, but um, already we're coming up with maybe potential future uses for it. Now your R2 runs on wheels, and it helps that it works on wheels because it, it's easier to move it, and Wally works on treads. That must have been one of the toughest parts of building this Wally. Yeah, while Michael was working on the body and the heads and all those dimensions, I was working on the track drive, and the track drive turned out to be very problematic because we wanted it to look like it does in the movie, but it still had to work in the real world. And of course, in CGI, you don't have to worry about the real world, world physics and, yeah. and you know making things operate properly. The first thing we started with was a part that was made in a rapid prototyper. This was made by Andy Schultz, another R2 builder who was in our Wally building group. And this was based on the actual tread. I quickly realized that this wouldn't quite fit on the plastic conveyor track that I was going to use underneath as the structure. So I had to make this piece out of wood, which it's similar 
uh, in appearance, but it has cutouts for the conveyor track so that it would work with the system that I was using mechanically. So from here, we made a mold and we made resin copies of this. From there, we made six of them. I made a whole new mold, which was a gang mold. So then we could pour the rubber copies from this. So each one had to individually be poured wow. and there were 68 treads total on Wally. -E. Each one had to be made by hand and the wheels themselves, the wheel covers, um, all of those we made on a wood lathe, molded those, recast, yeah, everything on it. The steel structure underneath, I welded here in the shop. I'm very pleased with the way it moves. You know, it really works well on smooth surfaces. He doesn't like to climb very much, but concrete and wood floors and things like that, he handles like a dream. It's puppeteering, basically. You're controlling an animatronic robot and so how do you, like, what are your controls in terms of moving them around and what can you move? For driving it, it's just a single control for the tank drive, uh -huh. uh, which is really handy. So just my right hand does all the driving and then my left hand manipulates the head. And so we can look about 270 degrees. He can pitch up, pitch down. Um, we can move the eyebrows with a gear switch. And then of course I have remotes on the sides that cue up the sounds. <laughs> And then, of course, he can play music as well. That's amazing, Michael. We can't wait to see what else you come up with, how you improve Wally -E next. Where can people find out more information um, about this project? The Wally Builders Club, it's a Yahoo group, and they can go to Yahoo and type in Wally Builders Club, they can find us there, or they can go to wallybuildersclub.net. And for more makers like Michael and their amazing projects, you can go to tested.com, subscribe to our channel on YouTube. I'm Norm, this is Wally, it's Mike. See you guys next time. Wow.